introduce my mother-in-law, Clara, my wife, Michelle, and my daughter, Sylvia. Hello, you guys. Welcome to What the Flick. I am Christy. This is Alonzo. This is Matt. It's a very, very full day. We're going to start out with In Time, the futuristic, post-apocalyptic In Time in a world where everyone stops aging at 25. And not just at 25, <laughs> everyone is a perfect 25. Everyone is gorgeous. You have like Justin Timberlake, Amanda Seyfried, you have Killian Murphy, you have- uh, Olivia Al Wilde. Uh, Olivia Wilde, right. Alex Pettifer. So like you're 25 and you're hot for the rest of your life. So it's the ideal <laughs> Hollywood movie. Right, and, uh, and so Justin Timberlake is framed for a crime he didn't commit and he goes on the run and Amanda Seyfried becomes his reluctant partner in crime. How old are you? 28. I'm 105. But the day comes when you've had enough. If you had as much time as I have, what would you do with it? I sure as hell wouldn't waste it. The last time anyone saw him alive, there was over a century on that clock. Well, follow the time. His name is Will Salas. You can't hide a hundred years in the ghetto. I'm sorry to have to break up the party, Mr. Weiss. I just need to work with your friend. So we were just commenting about how ridiculous it is to have various people of various ages cast to play 25, because the joke is that Olivia Wilde is Justin Timberlake's mother, but in real life she is three years younger right. than him. Right, right. Well, but cast to look 25, right? right? Because some people do. are supposed to be in their 80s. Right, right. right. 105 yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So did you like this? Eh. Eh? Eh. Okay. I, I liked it at the beginning. The beginning had me really going. I, now, I will say, I think the premise is kind of silly. Like the premise, the premise is cool. I, the premise is cool, but but you have to you have to really let a lot. There's a lot of suspension of disbelief mm -hmm. that it requires. You know that that the idea. It's a complicated idea. Everybody stops aging at 25, and then you've got a year to live. Right. But the time is transferable. It's currency. And so <laughs> the economy is now based on the time you have left to live. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. It's. It's, I find it weird that a world would get to that point. As somebody who reads a lot of sci-fi, right. like that it would get to that point is kind of outlandish to begin with. But then, in the first act of the movie, I found that there were some really interesting explorations of that. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're poor, you kind of run everywhere because you don't have the time. People are literally living day to day. I thought that there was some interesting stuff going on there. And the transfer um, of time is cool. That you can like yeah, gra grasp risks exactly. and share time. That's yeah, cool. I thought that was kind of cool. Know? I thought that you know there were some interesting things like late, you know a little bit later in the movie as Justin Timberlake's now in the high class section of town, like they can spot him or some people can spot him because he does everything too fast. Right. One of the characters says, "You eat too fast. You do everything too fast. You're you know, it's and it's almost this nouveau riche kind of thing that they're that they're doing, but. I found that as the movie progressed, it just got goofier and goofier, <laughs> and, and what could almost be a really sharp satire of the financial system just gets so dumb. Well, here's the, th this is a flawed film. I mean, there's a lot of silliness to it, and, and uh, some of the action sequences are kind of hokey. There's a lot of dialogue, a lot of time puns. Too that are many really time painful. puns, yeah. But this is one of the most audaciously <laughs> left-wing movies I have <laughs> ever seen. Mm. The idea that News Corp made a movie that is about <laughs> the redistribution of wealth and about how people who are rich are only rich because they stole it from the working classes. Mm. I mean, you do not have to be Marx to look at this movie right. and see that it is this like, it's all, it's socialist propaganda. And it I totally mean that is. in the and, best and, way and possible. And one of the points that gets made early on in the film is that one of the characters set, flat out says the system is built to keep people poor, basically. Right. Like, right. I'm paraphrasing. And for some people to be immortal, other people have to die. In other words, right. the rich have to take the time but away the difference here from is the that poor people. And it's like, I mean, these are really bold political statements for a Hollywood movie to be making, and this isn't subtext. This is like right in right. your face. Right, there's a, a couple different times where um, the villain whose headquarters is the CAA building. Yes, the, the Death Star on Star. Avenue of the Stars. Um, he <laughs> says, this is Darwinian capitalism. Yeah. And he's really proud of that idea. Except and it makes no apologies. 
apologies for it. The problem I have with this being a socialist film is that on a certain level, I feel like it gets the message wrong in that if that's what it's trying to do, the difference here is that in the world that they've set up is that if you go broke, you drop dead. And so this movie is And also, how is that different well, from... But, but, the, <laughs> but the equivalent is, you know, not to get too much into the politics, but th the filmmakers also seem to be saying that not having any money, you might as well be dead. No, Which, I, think it's, I think it's not having money, you are dead, because you can't feed yourself and you can't, you know, get medical care and you can't but take it, care of your... You can't live as long as people who have money do because they have okay, access to that. doctors, you know. The, so it's not, it's not that money equals something to live for. It's that, that, that having access to money equals being able to live longer no, I, and be... I, I agree. But the you people know. who have money aren't happy. Like, Amanda Seyfried is really thrilled to go with Justin Timberlake and be Bonnie to his Clyde right. because she lives in this cage. Well, right. Well, so. because, because the thing because the currency isn't something that can be put in a vault, like you're literally carrying it on your arm, the rich people have to be surrounded by bodyguards mm -hmm. all the time because otherwise somebody's going to come up and, mm -hmm. you know, take it all from them. Um, so, yeah, they obviously lead this shelter existence and yeah they're not they're not saying oh isn't it great to be rich I mean by no, any means. No it's more like look how bored look how sheltered look how bored. It's like why bother? Nobody we will take any risks. Yeah, 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 you have see that immortality and you do nothing yeah. with it. Is but see I'm thing. not sure that that's entirely accurate because I think people who have a lot of money like they call it the good life for a reason. But like, but, but it, here's what's interesting, though. They, they in, in this movie, m time, as with money in real life, does not trickle down. Well, <laughs> so true. Like, they live these lives forever. You know, the, the whole. It, you could even cut it, get into a whole metaphor about how the people that say that you know if you cut taxes on the wealthy, they're going to create jobs. No, you cut taxes on the wealthy, and they're going to keep their money in a Swiss bank account, and no one's going to touch it, and they're not going right. to do a damn thing with well, it. Well, and, and I think you know the discussion we're having here is more intelligent than actually what goes on yes. in the movie. And that's, granted, and that's the biggest problem. Is is that this movie, like I said, I thought is a missed opportunity. It could have been a much sharper satire about the state of the economy and some people's view of it. And it just kind of turns itself into this action movie. And what political points it makes are kind of a little too ham-fisted. Like they're thinly veiled and I feel like it doesn't really make them very well. I feel like they're kind of unrealistic. And I guess, but okay, Andrew Nichol wrote and directed this. He did Gattaca. He wrote right. the Truman Show, and maybe that's a compromise he had to make, right? Where you th he maybe. he gets his points across, but it still has to be crowd pleasing and accessible. And you yeah. see it as socialist propaganda, and you're right, that's in there. Yeah. But it also has to be Justin well, Timberlake shirtless uh, and running all the time. Yeah, no, no, no. I know? mean, it's definitely he's 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 wrapped it in the baloney of, you know, like when you're giving a pill to a dog, you know, <laughs> there's great car chases, and it, there's a, I love the, the sort of retro future look to it, it's you know? Beautiful. The right. cars are really cool. It did make me think of Gattaca at the time, yeah. right? Like, a, the same kind of, a similar production design. Right. right. Uh, we should mention also, um, Roger Deakin shot this thing. The oh, great, nice. The great yes. Roger Deakins, and so it's really, really right. beautiful between and the... And it's shot the, all over L.A. Right, it's all, it's well, all like yeah. industrial downtown L.A. I, I, love, I love that 40 yeah. years after Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, Century City is still the future. <laughs> it's, very, you know? it's very shiny and gleaming, but yeah, but, but he, you get like the, the grimy kind of industrial chic yes, of yes. downtown LA, but you also get like the gleaming high rises and right. it's a beautiful film. Um, Amanda Seyfried is all dolled up to look like Anna Wintour. She's, yeah. got, she's got the blood cut She's got the ridiculous bob. Louise Brooks way, yeah, wig um, going. You know, Everyone's beautiful, I, dressed beautifully. I, I, it I looks thought, great. I thought Amanda Seyfried was doing nudity now. And what happened here? <laughs> yeah. She's wearing classic party dresses. All right, so um, we, are, we are mixed on this. Let's do numbers. Alonzo. Uh, you know, I'll say 6.8. Okay. Uh, I'm not as happy about it. I give it a five. <laughs> I'm in between. I'm six and a half. I, it's so you're fun. redistributing our scores? <laughs> so everyone gets something. Um, but it's, yeah, it's beautiful. It's fun. It's a really cool idea that they beat into the ground. Like once you realize there's nowhere else to go with it, it feels very repetitive. Yeah. So six and a half for me. Our total is 6.1. It's much lower than this in the tomato world. It's like in the 30s, yeah, right? Yeah, like 39. They just showed this to us yesterday, which is, and the movie opens tomorrow. So they kind of hid this from us. I don't think they needed to. No, I don't think I, it's 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 not terrible, but it's just it, it's ultimately it's it's not something like Gattaca that you're going to be thinking about years later. I I, I think that it, this it, is a movie. It doesn't where it's, all work, but I think there's some cool ideas in there. All right, there you go. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.